We get a chance this morning to visit again with Joel Patterson. We talked with him last summer, as a matter of fact. Uh, he is a workplace expert, head of the, the Vested Group. Uh, and our conversation is brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the Best of Indiana County Contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Joel is here to talk with us about um, employment issues, and in particular, Joel, good morning, by the way. Good morning. Great to be here. It's good to have you with us. Um, uh, In particular, we're interested in this idea of um, uh, productivity in the United States being way, way off in 2022, and uh, employees don't really seem to mind that. (laughs) I I, I love the phrase there, uh, we are less willing to engage in hustle culture. We're not we're not exactly giving it our all on the job, are we? Well, there's certainly a subset of people out there that are doing that. And that survey that you're referring to, about 20% of the people said they're doing the bare minimum. And 5% say they're doing less than they're paid to do. And, and you know, the last couple of years have obviously been a largely about keeping people healthy, learning how to work remotely. But I think we, you know, early on it was, oh, productivity is still up. But now I think the inevitable has finally come and you're seeing that, that productivity has not stayed up, that we're trying to figure out ways to keep people more engaged uh, to, 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 to battle that. But the reality is, you know, we started with the great resignation and then quiet quitting, and, and, um, and there's been this just kind of chaos in the employer-employee relationships over the last couple of years. And, and now we're getting to where, all right, how do we get these people that aren't engaged, how do we get them to be more focused on what they do? Because you certainly can, can it's, it's easier to keep, and engage or invest in the people that you have rather than going out and looking for other people. So how do we really take advantage of that? And there's a lot of people out there right now that just, that, that seem to be unwilling to engage in the hustle culture that we're used to. And we've got to, we've got to get a little creative about it. Yeah. Well, you just used a phrase that I found interesting. You said uh, that the inevitable uh, has come to pass. Why was it inevitable that we would, we'd find ourselves in this situation? Yeah, it's funny, as I'm talking to employees and just other people, uh, and, and, and you get them together again for the first time in a while, that light bulb goes off, and then you see why it's inevitable, because we're just social people, right? And we want to be around other people for the most part. It doesn't mean we have to be there all the time. I do think some change is, is good when it comes to this. But to just go to where we don't spend time with people at all, uh, really, I think it's had an impact, especially for new hires. You think about how you bring them on board and get them indoctrinated into your culture, into what they need to do. There's, it's so difficult to do that on a screen call versus in a room where you've got water cooler talk or just the sidebar conversations that happen all the time. And there was just no way to really replace that interaction. And now I think we're finally seeing it. You know, the technologies and the things that we were able to use really came in handy and worked great for the most part. But the, the interaction, the, the, the real social time has not, we've not got a solution for that yet. And, and that's really what I mean. I mean, I think especially the, the college graduates and things that we work with, it's really evident that they just, they need that support and that mentoring in person. That work ethic that so many of us have, and then we're finding people who don't have that same work ethic within their jobs. Um, it really puts pressure on those who are really giving their, giving their all, doesn't it? Yeah, sure. And, and you go back to the quiet quitting concept. And, and, you know, I understand why people would push back of wanting to work or not wanting to work more than what they're being paid for. I mean, that makes sense to me. But, but what I'm seeing is that they are taking that a step further and, and really even the 40 hours that they've committed to not putting their all into that. And that's where the, the rub is. I mean, if, if you're complaining that you're not being treated fairly, and you're working too much, well, the flip side of that is then make sure you're getting in what you're being paid for. And I think that, that you're seeing some people push back against that so much so that they're even getting a second job and doing as little as possible. You know, there's actually a website out there, and there's probably more than one, but I know <laughs> I've seen one uh, where it actually gives you methods to have two full-time jobs so that you can keep your LinkedIn profile straight, you know, all those other kind of things. Uh, and, and that's just kind of a sign of the times people are willing to do that kind of, that kind of thing and put effort into maintaining two jobs instead of putting all that effort into one. So, you know, as an employer, keep an eye out for those things because you know, there's going to be dips, uh, in, 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 in productivity when they are remote. But when you recognize that kind of stuff, you know, sometimes it's just as simple as taking five minutes in a month mm-hmm. and just reaching out to that person and make, making sure that they feel important and that they're engaged 
and that you're intentional with them. Uh, there's lots of methods to be able to keep people engaged, but the reality is out there, there's a lot of people looking for ways to do just the opposite. Well, that's interesting. You said that some people are taking a second job where they can slack off there too. <laughs> that's amazing. Hard um, to imagine, but it's true. <laughs> it's it's really a, a, a leverage situation, isn't it? it? It used to be the employer had all the leverage. Now the employees have much more leverage and, uh, and they've learned to take advantage of it. And, and so you, you started with uh, some things that employers can do. Not to gain regain leverage, but certainly to regain productivity. What are some of the specific steps you think should be should be undertaken? Well, it's not it's not difficult. I mean, I, I think people get nervous about. All right, well, I'm, I've got this big issue in front of me, and how do I attack it? Really, just take that first step. And like I said, just just be intentional five minutes a day with somebody. It's really as simple as that to get a feel for what's going on with them. You know, companies were really good about doing this during the pandemic and making sure that they understood how people were feeling and making sure they stayed healthy. Well, we're still in that mode in some ways, and we've got to get back to being able to know that that person is doing okay or not. Make sure that people are being touched you know, often and consistently so that you know where they are. It's, you know, if you think back a couple of years ago and you saw that somebody that you knew pretty well coming in and they were clearly beaten down by something, you know, their, their body language was not good, you would go over and you would spend time with them and they would, you know, something would happen. You would connect with them in some way. Well, that is just gone. And when you don't have those, those moments, you've got to be able, you've got to just force it and be intentional about it. And then if you're the employee and you're really kind of frustrating and, and frustrated and you don't think that this is a place you want to give your all, really ask yourself why you feel that way. Because the grass is rarely greener out there. Mm-hmm. And right now with people that have changed jobs a lot, one thing to consider is there's this concept of a first out, or last in, first out. So if you change jobs now and, and the economy is, who knows what it does next year, um, you know, that's just something to consider. You don't want to be the person that was, that was looked at, to, all right, well, you're the last person here, so I'm going to go ahead and let you go. So take those into account when you're thinking about, well, I want to do the bare minimum here. You might have a really good setup, and you might want to just redouble down on, or double down on, on your commitment to that organization and make sure that you're doing all that you can. Joel Patterson is online with us from Dallas, Texas. We're talking uh, about employment and uh, employees and attitudes and actions that can be taken to uh, increase productivity in a year when productivity is way down across the United States. Is that where the vested group comes in, Joel? Yeah, we work with companies that are looking to grow and scale. And I'm often asked, uh, you know, we, when we bring the systems along with it to allow them to do that, I'm often asking, you know, what are the things that you look for in employees when you're hiring? And it's the same thing. It's, it's We're looking for People that want to grow, they have a growth mindset, and they want to learn new things, and they want to engage, and they want to invest in, in their clients and their, and their colleagues, and it's as simple as that. And our, our business kind of ties exactly to that. So we're just looking for ways to, uh, to find people that, that really want to be there, and we'll teach them what they need to do. And I think most employers are that way these days. You know, the, the days of people screaming at you and, and, and treating you, treat you horribly – Aren't, it's really difficult to maintain employees when you're doing that. So, um, you know, just go try to find a place that really invests in you, and, and I, I think you'd be surprised at how many of them are out there. It's interesting to me as well that uh, we're finding within our schools that uh, all of our schools around here, and it's probably the same in, in a lot of other places, are having difficulty finding teachers and finding people to work within them. Uh, and uh, and the the culture and the environment uh, in schools that has to be really really positive because of the influence that you're going to have on on the young folks who are there the kids uh, and and so for schools I would assume uh, that the same issues are, are compounded uh, by the importance of the job. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and you, then you, you think about things like pay in general. I mean, I you hear a lot of stories about the pay being uh, not what it needs to be in that industry, and and that's going to just double down the issue on the issue. And, and, and so finding methods that work for your organization and your group of people, like as an example, we do daily huddles. So our people get together, everybody's on a huddle for 10 to 12 minutes every morning. So at least there is one opportunity to see that person, even if it's on a screen and potentially, you know, engage with them if it looks like they need some help. Um, but, you know, that may not work for all companies. You've got to find what works for you and be intentional and be consistent. The consistency is really the biggest thing because this can't be something that you just start doing and then in a the month you stop. You've got to show people that you're serious about this and taking care of them is, is step number one. You obviously keep an eye on projections for 
in the coming months and years. Uh, so 2022 has not been a good year in terms of U.S. productivity within the workplace. What does 2023 look at? Is it a trend that is going to reverse? You know, I, I still see a lot of strong indications in the people that I work with. Um, you know, companies are still investing internally in their infrastructure, in their in their growth and scalability, like I was talking about before. And to me, that's a great sign that that there's a lot of really good opportunities still out there. I feel like, especially the tech companies, they just way overhired. And, and, and unfortunately, that gets all the press. And, um, and so, you know, we've got to deal with that. But, but I still see a lot of really encouraging signs. Yeah, there's going to be a step back, and that makes sense. But I feel pretty bullish about the year, and we haven't, we haven't pulled back on our, our expectations for 2023 at all. It's interesting that when you say that, uh, you know, tech companies way overhired. I think in, in a lot of cases with those tech companies, uh, they said to themselves, okay, I'm in this uh, great position right now, but I don't want to do the work, so I'm going to hire a bunch of people to come in and do the work for me. Um, and they found people that had the same attitude as they did toward work, and so that's why they found themselves in that fix. Right, and that's why. You know what's crazy is I, I just I did not realize this, but I, I saw this number earlier today that Amazon doubled its workforce in two years during the pandemic. I didn't realize it was that high. Whew. And and given that it does, it makes perfect sense why they would have they would be laying people off now. Growing that fast, uh, especially because they were investing in different things. I mean, that's just difficult to do. So I, I try not to panic too much when I see the headlines. I really look at what's going on with my clients, with my business. And, and, and try to make some determination there. And there's still, there's still some good stuff going on. Yeah. Joel Patterson, where do we learn more about The Vested Group? You can always go to thevested.com. And if you work with NetSuite, we are somebody you should talk to. And uh, thank you for the time. Really appreciate it. Joel, I appreciate it down there in Dallas. What's it like there in Dallas today? It's cold. It's cold. It's, uh, it's about 25 right now, and uh, we're not built for that. So we're ready for some, <laughs> some, some warm weather, but we don't have any coming soon. So All right. Uh, well, spring is coming. Thanks, Joel. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Take care. You do the same. It is the voice of Indiana County WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 116 FM and AM 116 FM.